So Substance Designer just released this new version where you can use the same kind of procedural node process to design 3D models, which is super powerful, but it's super complicated too. So, and there's also not any tutorials or documentation or anything on how to get started with it. So I thought it'd be a good idea to just like show you the bare minimum of like how to just get your feet wet and get familiar with the process. So if you're in that situation, just go ahead and click file new and then substance model graph. And so from here, it's pretty much the same workflow as normal substance designer. You have your nodes up here, your output down here, and then you can kind of filter through all the nodes you want down here. And then all your parameters over here, of whatever you're making. And so I, to kind of just give you an idea of like how this software works, I'll just make a pile of cubes and just kind of like simulate an array of them falling. And so first what I'll do is just make that cube. I'll hit the space bar and type primitive and click primitive 3D. If I double click this, it'll show up in the viewport. And so you can edit whatever you want here. If you wanted it to be a cone or a sphere or whatever else, you can do that. But I'll stick with the cube. And if you wanted to kind of edit these parameters, you could go into the wireframe to get a better idea of what you're doing. So like if you add segments or whatever, you know, um, but anyway, I don't want that. So what I'll do is like this cube is perfect as is. So I'll go ahead with my array. I'll drag this out and then type in array and then click enter. And so I'll tie this to the top assets uh, input. So now if I double click this array, nothing actually happened. And the reason is that all the cubes are in the same position because the offset is zero on all of them. So if I put one of them as a hundred, you'll see it stretched it out. But in my case, it kind of looks like one object. If I go to the wireframe, you'll see it actually is two. They're just like exactly touching here on the side. So I will set it not on 100, but like 110 on each side. 110, 110. So now I got a bunch of cubes and I'm gonna want more than this. So I'll say like probably 10 in each direction. So that that's looking good. And then being node based like this and super non-destructive, you could just go back and then change the cube if you wanted. So like you have this single base cube being referenced by the array. So like if you wanted this all of a sudden change to spheres or whatever, you know, you could do that and it'll just update up the chain. And so I want to just rotate this whole array and kind of have it fall on one of its corners. So I'll drag an output and type transform and I'll grab this transform, put it to the source. And if I double click the transform, I can start rotating stuff. So I'll say like probably like 45 degrees in each direction. So now when it falls, it'll fall on this little corner here. And so that is pretty much all I really need for this part of it. All I want now is the plane that it hits. So I will make a new primitive and make this a plane. So if I hit F in the viewport to kind of enlarge that, um, it's way too small at the moment. So like all the cubes are gonna fall off of it. So I will up the width probably like 5,000 would be my guess. Just make it larger than you need it. And so essentially what I'll be doing is combining these two into one physics node. So they just interact with each other because right now there are two separate things that you don't see at the same time. So I'll make a physics node or physics drop node. And then I'll, the top one is the static geometry. So the thing that's being hit. And then the bottom one is that the dynamic one, the one that is actually moving. So I will drag my dynamic and my plane into static. So now if, if I were to double click this, it'll simulate it and take a minute to process all these cubes falling. But I already know off the top of my head that I don't want it to simulate with its base setting. So like if I click it just once, I can scroll down and I'll see the max simulation time is set to three seconds. That's not enough for all these cubes to fall down and kind of rest. So what I want to do is up this to like 20 seconds. 
And so that should probably give me enough time for all of them to fall and hit this plane and kind of just rest. So what I'll do is double click on this and it'll start processing it. So all of that just processed and you can kind of see some of them fell off. I'm not sure exactly why they would have because that plane should be, yeah, that plane's big enough. Um, but you get the idea of how it's working. So using this, oh, it actually is now processing again by accident. Um, but using this process, you could just procedurally edit anything down the line. And so you can kind of see how powerful it is to use this node system, but it is a bit complicated. So you could just like, I don't even know if I, you know, I can't even search right now because it's processing. Um, but you could just, you know, mess around with the nodes and kind of play around with these different things that you can combine into one another to really make something cool. Um, but yeah, that is more or less how designer works. If anyone has any questions, feel free to reach out. I'm planning on making some more tutorials on it, but yeah, that is the very general gist of how this software works.